Ladies and gentlemen, uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of the one, only God, His Word, and His Spirit. Amen. Uh, on YouTube, you see uh, at times something like pay to pray. The Vatican says that Christians, Catholics in Germany, who do not pay the church taxes, should not be admitted in the church and not to the sacraments. Well, apparently, truth is the other way around. It's when you declare to the court, I mean to the state, because the state, it's the state of Germany, which is the state in Germany, which undertakes this uh, and which administers this uh, Kirchensteuer, this uh, church tax. So when you declare to the state that you do not belong anymore to the church, then as a result, you don't pay the Kirchen, Kirchensteuer, the church tax. And you yourself officially consider yourself that you left the church, that the aus der Kirche uh, uh, ausgetreten sind. So, but nobody forbids you if you ever change your mind or if you feel really the necessity to go to church in spite of this official position of yours, which you decided between you and the state, well, the church never tells you that you are not welcome. Christ never tells you you have to pay. As a matter of fact, don't talk about the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church, most of the Catholics in the world come from poor countries where exactly the church, the Vatican, spends on them rather than the other way around. Let's think of the Middle East, uh, Latin America, Asia. Of course, the church does depend on so-called rich countries like Germany or the United States, at least once upon a time. But this does not mean that to be a Catholic is bound by paying the tax. On the contrary, it was actually Protestantism to the best of my knowledge, which introduced this church tax. You find the church tax in the Protestant countries, whether you don't find any church tax, generally speaking, in the Catholic countries, uh, except, of course, for the, after the Concordato in Italy, sometimes, sometime in the 30s or in the 20s of the last century. In other words, it was the princes who were in the 16th century against the emperor and against the pope who claimed for them the taxes and it stayed, of course, as state and church together again in the Protestant countries. And now if you look at the Catholic countries, you don't find any church tax. As for the Old Testament, and as for the precepts of the church, you have the dime. The dime, which is one-tenth of your income, you dedicate it to the church. And when you have the contract with the state, then it is deducted from your taxes. Anyway, the Catholic Church also tries with the pious organizations and the charity organizations, sponsors, benefactors, also to have what they offer to the church, which is fair enough, to be deducted from their taxes. Uh, this is only to tell us that please do not rely on any YouTube that you see and uh, make sure when it's about the church, then ask the church people they know better and uh, they have no interest to tell you anything but the truth.
actually before this YouTube, I called several people I know personally in Germany and they confirmed what I am telling you here. Jesus didn't ask for any tax and uh, as I said, well, just look at the so-called free churches, free denominations and see how much they get from their faithful. First of all, as a dime and then more or less officially it gets according to some statistics in some denominations, it gets up to 20%. What I know from my personal experience in the Holy Land, in the whole of the Middle East, in the whole of Latin America, is that you can be a Catholic without giving one single dime to the, and I'm saying dime, one single dime to the church. Whereas in other denominations, you cannot possibly be a member without spending money without paying explicitly the dime, without buying books, booklets, magazines, uh, which uh, amounts uh, in certain uh, pseudo, I mean false uh, denominations which claim falsely to be Christians, which comes up to 20% at least of people's income. Anyway, Jesus, and if, if I say, it's the case that really uh, some bishops, in Germany have this position, then you can be sure that the Vatican will be working in order to improve this, I mean to correct this, to rectify this, especially in these days, because yesterday in the Vatican started the Synod of the Bishops for the new evangelization, announcing again and again the gospel starting to the clergy uh, to those members of the clergy who has forgotten Jesus and who prefer, who would seem at least, you know, uh, in an outside look to prefer Judas. So even if this were uh, correct, well, uh, you can be sure that uh, the Catholic Church will work in order to put an end to any abuse. Thank you for your attention.